Hey, how's it going everyone? Today I felt like building a web page and we're going to build a clone to the upcoming Dune movies. Well, not the Dune movies web page, but to the Dune novels web page. So the movie Dune is actually based on a novel and I just love it. I'm a big Dune fan. I have, I also played the game way, way back. I read the novel, amazing. It's a really long one. And I also saw the first movie, the 2000 kind of documentary series movie. And I can hardly wait to see the upcoming movie. So let me also show you the project for today. And let me hit the refresh. We're going to have a here, a bit of an animation effect, zoom in and blur effect. Up here, we're going to have a navigation with also a bit of, well, on the line, zoom in and fade in effect for the navigation tabs. They won't do anything except in refreshing or leaving us down to ne the next section. Now let's also scroll down. Down here, we're going to have another section where we're going to have the upcoming date. It's, I hope it still remains October 22. Here we're going to have a play button and then the Dune, uh, well, the Dune icon. Down here, we're going to have a section with latest news. These are the books. Uh, we're going to have a button. You can click it, nothing will happen, but it's going to have a little bit of hover effect. Okay, and then completed down here, we're going to have a, a, subscription, a subscription form for the website. Now this is also completely responsive. So let, okay, so let's go down to a smaller format and let's uh, also, when we're on a small format, the navigation is going to disappear. We don't need it anymore. Uh, let's remain somewhere here. And also the, the sections are going to stack one over the other. So pretty simple website, but what is special about this one is we're going to create it using only SAS, so SCSS. So if you never use SAS, it's a perfect opportunity to just code along or watch the video and see how SAS is going to, it's going to work for you. Uh, let me just take a look at a couple of things. So we are going to structure it completely like a SAS project. We're going to have a distribution folder where our CSS or our exported CSS or compiled CSS is going to live. Our index.html, our images will also live there. So this is actually the part that you would distribute then to a website. And then we're going to have a SAS folder where our components, we're actually going to build a button component, a form component, a navigation component. Then we're going to have our basic uh, section. Then we're going to have our basic configuration, mix in, responsive design because as you saw it was completely responsive and we're going to also take care of that one our utilities now these are all partials okay so they will be at the end imported in one style.css that is going, then going to be compiled into a regular css which as you know may or not may not know websites to, cannot read sas files or sas code they can only read css code and we're also going to have variables. So, yay. Okay, so I'm going to show you how you can set up your SAS environment. And then let's get into the project. So, see in the project. All right, so I just created an empty folder. You can call it whatever you wish. And within here, I'm going to create a SAS folder. Boom, that's it. Now, let's really quickly go to uh, extensions. What am I doing? And search for SAS. Now what you do need is this live SAS compiler. And as soon as you have it installed and you create a SAS file, let me show you what will happen. Actually, no, first of all, we're going to go to manage, then settings, and then we're going to search. So after you have it installed, search for SAS. And there we go. And we need our SAS compiler here. And then we're going to go to edit JSON. So this is what you need. Live says compiler settings formats. I would suggest that you leave the format as extended and then extensions, just leave it as dot scs uh, dot css and then the safe path. This is really important. I'm going to delete this because this is for my, um, this was for my bootstrap course. Uh, and this is the format that you need. So you wish to, compile this is where the c the sas format is going to compile into css and it's going to 
go into a distribution folder within the forward slash is that is going to be in your project to the distribution folder and to a CSS folder. Okay. So let's try this out. Let's save it, close it up, close up the settings, close up this one, go, uh, go into our folder and within our SAS folder, let's just create a new file called style dot S C S S boom, create a file down here. You can now click on watch says, and if you click on watch says, then there we go. A folder was created for you in your main folder. And we have a says, Hey, it let, let the map in there. Uh, no problem. This is just going to create a very short map of, uh, of whatever you create here. Now within our CSS file is where our says is going to be compiled. Let me just show you this, but if I create here, let's say a main, uh, this, Actually, let me grab, grab onto a div tag, which we don't have. And let's say that this div is going to have a max width of 300, 200 pixels and a background color of hash free, free, free. Okay, let's hit save. And now if you take a look in our CSS, there we go, the code is there. Now what CSS can do and CSS cannot do is nest. And what do I mean by that? Well, for example, if in this div, would, there would be a icon tag, I don't have to do div icon. So I can only, so I would only target the icon tag uh, within this div. I can target it within here. Okay. And if I would do something like this, then let's say the icon tag is going to have a font size of two RAM. So you couldn't do this. You cannot do this in SAS, but now if I would take a look in my CSS file, it will compile like regular CSS. So the icon tag within the div tag is going to have a font size of two RAM. But everything that I'm doing here, I already have explained in my, in my SAS crash course. So I'm going to leave a link up here somewhere, or I'm going to also leave it down in the description below. Also the entire code is down in the description below. So if you wish to download it and just follow along with the video, then please feel free to do so. If you wish to code along and then just compare it separately later on. So if you made any kind of mistakes, then you could also do that. Okay. So I'm going to delete, uh, everything in a style.css file and let's now really start with the project. So within our distribution, I'm going to create our index file. So new file index.html and I'm also it's not in the CSS folder. And I'm also going to create a new folder called images. And within our images, I'm going to drag and drop all the images that we're going to need. And you can just download them if you wish. Uh, from, uh, as I said, everything's down in the video description below. So we got our index.html. Let's launch a boiler bridge, shift exclamation mark. Let's also link up our CSS file. So our CSS file is within here, but we have to go one level up. Wait a second. So link tag, and we're going to go within our distribution file. Let's just stay within here, one level up CSS. And there we go, the style.css file. So if I would have a header, let's say each one of um, Dune, hit enter. Let's take a, let's also launch it using live servers so open with live server. Let's go over to our project. There we go. There's our Dune file. If I now, there's a Dune title. If I now would go into our style.css and say like h1 color red, hit save. Also, you can see down here, it is compiled correctly. That's why it's green and you have success. If you would have an error that is going, then it's going to display as error. Okay, and our Dune title is now red. Boom. I'm going to delete this. And should I do the HTML now? Let's set everything up. Let's start with a configuration file. Now, our partials, where I'm going to do our configuration file, our mixing, our, our responsiveness, utilities, and so far, so on, and also our components are partials. But 
let's say that when I'm using a partial, I'm going to also declare it as a, let's say that these are uh, utilities. And then we're going to have another folder. Let's call this one components. Let's use small letters components. And you should be, there we go. So we're going to go into our, com into our utility folder and let's create our very first file. Let's call this config. Now when you create a partial, you need to have an underscore. So config.scss. Now the difference is that this file is not going to compile into CSS, but only what will be passed through into our style file. Now in order to use a partial file, we need to import it into our main style CSS file. So do something like import and then within quotations we're going to type in the the name of the file that we wish to import now this file is first of all not here but it's in our utilities and it's called config okay boom there we go so now if i would type something in here uh let's see the dune title is now dark again so if i would type in here h1 uh title should have a color <clears throat> sorry about that of red it's save then we have down here we have success it's going to be compiled in our style.css and there we go the file uh, the dune title is now red and also if you take a look in a distribution in our style.css yeah don't need you hey there's our code okay i'm going to close this one up config delete this save it and now let's create a variables file now the variables file is where all our variables are going to be stored. Now, what kind of variables can we store in here? So underscore variables, scss. Now I'm going to, going to create a couple of colors. So I'm going to create uh, the way you create a variables, use dollar sign, name of the variable, and then the value of the variable, which is going to be hash 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Boom, there we go, a dark color, then a gold color. And it's going to be hash of BE984F. Uh, Boom, there we go. Not hash, dollar sign, what am I doing? Okay, now I'm also going to create a, a gold mid and a gold light color. So I'm going to copy you and you will be mid and it's going to be a bit of different color so hash c0 a f7 and 0 i'm going to copy you again well copy paste and you're going to be a light color now why would you use CSS? well CSS is much quicker than regular css f b5 Nine one, and if you have everything set up and also have your files already prepared, then you can build projects like that. Uh, now let's see. I'm also going to create a couple of variables for sizing. So I'm going to type in here size, in the comment up here. Going to have colors, and let's create a SM size. It's going to be zero point eight RAM. And let's copy this a couple of times. Then we're going to have a MD size, medium size with a 1.1 RAM, then an LG size uh, with a 1.4 RAM, and then an XL size with 1.8 RAM, and these two we don't need, and an XXL size with 2.1 RAM. And there we go. That's all that we need in our variables. Now, very important thing, this is why I did it opposite to how we do it, is that utilities, I think I just misspelled utilities. <laughs> okay, there we go. So, it's very important that to know that, C that SCSS is exactly like CSS. Now, this also means that it's going to compile in a cascading order. So if I need in my 
utilities file something from my config from my in my configuration file something from my variables files i cannot put i cannot import variables after configs so whatever is first you should import it first i'm going to copy this and change it into variables the very first thing that's going to be imported are the variable files now if we now take a look in our css files nothing happened although we have here our variables they're not being compiled they will only be compiled when we write some kind of css okay so any kind of regular css is also valid sass okay now let's go we are done with our variables we can close it up let's go into config and let's start configuring our website first things first i'm going to reset everything what does that mean i'm going to take out all of the margins of the paddings i'm going to size everything into a box size but also going to take care that the after after and also before our margin zero. So margin zero, padding zero, and box size and border box. And that's it. This is our general reset. Now I also don't want any kind of anchor tags or list items to have any kind of styling. So I'm going to do a list style none and also a text decoration none. Basically these two are going to take out those disks, disks from my anchor tag. Let me actually put it this way. And the text decoration is going to take out that underline from a anchor tag and the text not going to be blue. And from the list items, the, the disks are going to be taken out. So if I wish to add them, then I need to add them manually. Okay, now for the font family, we're going to use font awesome and from font awesome, uh, not font awesome, Google fonts. And from there, we're going to import a play, playfair fonts. So let's go to Google fonts and let's see uh, what did I need. There we go. And I think I imported all of the font weights. So regular italic. Select, select, select. And we had another style. Let's go back. And also search for me longer. My longer. Longer. There we go. And also import just this one. Okay. Now click on import copy everything that is between those two style tags, click on copy, go back to a file, and within here we're going to actually import it just like we would import a partial. Okay, now in order to use it, as always, you need to copy the font families or assign the font families to something. Now I'm going to assign to the body tag the font family of Playfair. And we're going to go to the section tags. We're going to see that all of the margins should be zero. And also within our body, I just want to do another thing. We're going to set the background color. So BG background color. We're going to set it to dark. So we're going to use our variable here. As soon as we do this, if we take a look in our project, hey, background color is dark. And so up here is our dune. Now because our background color is dark, let's set all of the colors of the text colors to the variable of gold and light boom there we go now for icons you could either use font awesome icons or bootstrap 5 icons yes bootstrap now also has icons as up from the latest version i also covered them completely in, um, in my booster 5 course but I think I'm going to go with font awesome icons this time. So let's say icons and let's go to font awesome. You should actually check out the font awesome CDN. So just type in font awesome. And there we go, there's our CDN. So I'm going to grab onto this link tag from Cloudflare. Also, this is going to be down in the description below. So if you, oh, 
uh, we need to import it. So at import, I'm going to import the URL. So you will need the copy the URL. Okay, so copy URL and paste it in here between quotations. And let's just try this out. Let's do, let's see if I do it here, it doesn't matter. Uh, but, but, uh, let's go to our HTML, let's do a quick icon FA and FA user hit enter and let's see if our user is there. Hey, there's a user. Okay, so Phantasm is working. Okay, we don't need you. And also this is basically it for a config file. We can now close it up. Okay, next up I'm going to create a file called utilities. Uh, actually utility classes, so U classes. Let's create here partial U classes. Hey, how are you doing? Partial U classes. SCSS. Now, what do I mean by this? These are classes. So if you ever use Bootstrap or any kind of um, of CSS framework, you know, you can use classes. So if you type in a class, for example, a text should be dark, then, uh, well, it's just going to make it dark. Now we are taking the, the, the opposite approach. I'm going to create those classes. And when we're going to type out our HTML, there will be, then we can import them. So let's go into our UT, U classes file. And let's start out with text. Let's type in a comment text. I'm just going to create a class, call it text. Within here, I'm going to target the parent. Now this means that this means this. Okay. So I'm going to add on to the text, the, the second class of dark. And this class of dark is going to have a color of the variable dark color. Okay. Pretty simple. Now let's take a look in our CSS. Everything that we typed in here is created excepting that class. So we need to import this. I'm just going to copy this and say U classes. There we go. There's the text dark class. Although I typed in text, I added the dark afterwards, you see it compiles and gives me this class. So this means that this class is now available for us to be used. Now let me create another one, ampersand and gold. This means again, I'm targeting the parent, the, the text class, and now I'm creating a text gold class. So I'm going to create, give this the color of variable gold. So in order not to bore you too much, I'm just going to copy them through. The word gold, I'm going to add to this a mid. The next one is going to be light. And then we're also going to have different sizes for classes. So this one is going to be SM and it's going to have a font size of the SM variable. So let's just quickly take a look in our CSS. You can see we have text dark, text gold, text gold mid, text gold light, and text SM. So let's follow through. Let's create the next couple of uh, dimensions, there's going to be MD, then LG, then XL, and the last one is going to be XXL. And there we go, we're done with our text classes. I'm also going to drop this down a bit. Okay, next up, let's do alignment. And what I mean by alignment, uh, first of all, I mean that I need to type it correctly, alignment. So let's grab on to, now oh, this should be, sorry, this should be in a text. So text alignment, this is text size. Also, if you wish to create a comment in, um, in CSS, then you would need to do something like this. If you 
go back to CSS. Uh, text, 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 text. Text size. Yep, there's a comment now. Okay, next up, let's do our alignment classes. So, M% we're going to target the parent again. And the first align is going to be to the start. So, text align to the start. Then, I'm going to copy this two times. We're going to have center and then end. Well, end is actually, what am I doing? End and this should be left. And this should be right. Okay. Okay, now let's create a couple of background colors. So let's go outside our text and let's create here a background color. Okay, so I'm going to create a class of BG. Grab onto the parent and say BG dark so parent dark it's going to have the color of dark then gold it's going to have the color of gold although you see i'm tapping in color not background colors this means when i'm applying this the text color is going to change gold and hey, and gold light. So I'm just going to copy this and add light to it. Okay, now I'm going to create a general container class dash container. Within here, going to give this container max width 1220 pixels. The container is going to have margins auto and it's going to have an automatic padding top and bottom zero and then left and right to rem okay i'm also going to create a a flex class so a display flex and within here we're going to use our first mixing so what do i mean by that let's go to utilities again create a new file let's call this mix in so mix in dot scss and within our mixin.scss, we're going to create our very first mixin, which is displaying something as flex. Now, you know that when you display something as flex, you have a couple of options that you always reuse and reuse. And that would be, you're going to type in display flex and the flex direction. And then you would just find the content center and align the item center. So not to use, to reuse or retype that code, we can create mixins. And as soon as you use that mixin, the entire code broop, is going to be automatically inputted. So the way you create mixins, going to type in at mixin, and then the name of the mixin is going to be the flex. Okay. And we said that we're going to display as flex, we're going to set the flex direction to row. Now I'm setting this to row, because when we use this mixin, we can still specify that that it should be displayed as column. So we can change it. Okay, now I'm going to grab onto the parent and say column. And this means that when I'm typing in display flex, but then use the keyword column after that, then the flex direction is going to be changed to column. It's just that. Now the next two settings are just by content, center, and align items itself align items to the center and there we go now in order to use a mixin we so so need to go back to our utility class in order to use a mixin we need to include it and we in, are including it either in classes or you can include mixins in mixins or in functions and so far and so on so we have to add include the d flex mixin and oh well, we have an error because oh, this is perfect I'm going to also show you how we handle errors so down here you have your console and it's going to say where the error is so no mixing name oh yeah <laughs> because i didn't import it 
So let's just think about it. We're using mixin in our utility classes. So where should mixins be in this hierarchy? Well, they should be before our utility classes. So I have to copy the config and change it name into mix in. Okay, let's hit save. And now we have successfully compiled our code. And if we go back to utility classes and hit save, everything is in order. Okay, next up, let's also create some fun family. Let's go put this down. You can actually close the console. You don't need it. Only when you have an error, then it's going to be, then it's going to pop up. For example, not closing or writing something like this in there. And there we go. Error. It's going to pop up and close it. Get rid of the error, hit save, and the console is gone. Uh, yeah, fun family said we're going to have some fun family. And I'm going to create a F class and this whoop, let's just this is going to have the uh, target the parent and me longer longa actually a very strange name and me long not far go yeah. <laughs> so this class is going to use the font family of that uh, Milonga family that we import. So Milonga. What am I doing? Milonga and comma cursive. Boom, there we go. So as soon as I'm going to use this F Milonga font family class, Milonga then uh, this font family is going to apply. Uh, you can also create margins and paddings. So, you know what? I'm going to copy them in because there are a lot. So basically I'm going to create an M class and I'm just going to show you one M percent one margin one RAM. That's it. So when I'm using M dash one, it's going to give you one uh, margin all around that element. So let me just copy all of them in. There we go. You can always download this from the video description and we're done with our utility classes. So let's see, we have variables, we have utility classes, uh, we have mixins and config. We still need to create a mixin for our animation, but I'm going to go back to that when we're actually creating our animation. So, so let's go ahead and use our classes. Now, first things first, I'm going to delete our H1 there and I'm going to type in here comment of navigation. So first things first, we're going to create our navigation bar. Now our navigation bar is going to use a nav tag, which is going to have a, should I even, yeah, let's include IDs. ID of navigation. This is going to have a class of display flex, so D flex, and it's going to have a BG dark, and also a text gold light. Okay, let's hit enter. Now within our navigation tag, we are going to have our list items, which are going to be included in a unordered list, but we're going to have two unordered lists. So if you take a look in our finished project, up here in our navigation, we have here navigation, then we have an icon in the middle, and then we have on the right side, a navigation. So we're going to do this by creating one unordered list on the left side, one on the right side, and in the middle, a image tag. So unordered list is going to include, I'm going to use a bit of emit here, so the honored list is going to have a class of display flex. Then it's going to include a li, which is then going to include a anchor tag. Uh, I'm going to multiply the li and the anchor tag. So put them into a parenthesis by free. And I'm going to multiply the ul by 
two and check it out. There we go. You just created two unordered lists and three allies and three anchor tags. Now within between them, I said I'm going to create an image tag. It's going to have from from a distribution folder images with Dune Dune novels logo MD. And this should give us a way huge logo. Don't worry, we're going to take care of this pretty soon. Okay, now let's populate our navigation uh, with within the anchor tags. We're going to say novel for the first one, then novels, multiple. Then we're going to have authors, authors bio, then buy books. And then in the next navigation, we're going to have uh, latest news. Then just news. Or actually, what is new? And then contact. Hey. There we go. Okay, so let's check out what just happened. There we go. We have on the left side, we have one navigation on the right side, not a navigation. And that's basically it for, for this part. Okay, so we're done with creating our navigation. Now we still need to style it a bit. So it's time to create our very first component. Now we're going to go into components because our navigation is a component or I consider it a component. Uh, we're going to create a new file. This is also going to be a partial. I'm going to call it nav.scss. Now we need to import it. So we're going to go after this components. components. And let's say at import. And we're going to import from our components. What am I doing? Close this up. So upper level components and the nav component. Okay, so the nav component is now imported. We can now start styling it. We're going to grab onto the ID of navigation. And first of all, let's take care of the image. So the image tag was way too, too big. So let's grab onto the image tag. And let's say height. We need to set it to 90 pixels. So let's take a look. And there we go. We have a small navigate. We have a small uh, image. Now we display this as flex and we justify the content with center, but we can still change it. So everything that we typed in Let's say in our utilities classes, we have our display flex class, which imports the mix in. Now, because this is cascading, whatever I type in next is going to override that option. So if I go into my navigation and say justify content with space uh, between actually around, around, hit enter go to my navigation. Hey, with the, within the, um, we have in our navigation, three items, there are two lists and one image tag. And now the content is justified with space around. Okay. So I just overwrit. I have just overwritten the initial code. Okay. Now let's grab onto all of the anchor tags within our navigation. And let's say color counter color, color. And we're going to set the color to gold light. Hit save. Let's take a look. There we go. Okay. Next up, let's grab onto the UL. So on our root list and within here, we're going to grab onto all of the icon tags and we're going to assign all, uh, not the icon tags, all of the list items. We're going to give them a padding. Boom. Padding of zero top and bottom and 1.2 RAM left and right. Okay, now let's also position everything relative. And we have anchor tags with our icon uh, list items. So we're going to target those. 
So remaining within our list items, we're going to change the font weight to 500. Okay, now if we take a look, there we go. We have space between, uh, between our navigation items and also the font weight just changed. Now, if you take a look in your CSS, you can see all the code that you're typing for the navigation is here. Now, how about have a bit of separation? As I said in my 10 tips for top beginner web developers, top 10 tips, commenting out, documenting your code is exceptionally important. So the navigation starts here. I want to insert the comment. Let's go back to navigation right at the top. And let's type in a comment. So forward slash star star, close it up and navigation. Now you need to type in a CSS comment in here in order for it to be compiled and I'll put it here as a regular CSS comment. If I type in a, if I type in, oh, sorry, if I type a normal comment, a SAS comment, which is also a JavaScript comment. So this is a coding language. SAS at the end of the day is a coding language. So comment, it's not going to be compiled. It's not going to show up here. Okay. So that's something for you to, to know. I can close up the utility classes, the mixings I still need, don't need a CSS. We still need to import them later on files and I need the index. So let's go back to our navigation and Let's uh, right after our anchor tags, but still remaining within our icon tags, we need to uh, now give them a bit of an effect. So when we hover, let's grab onto the parent. I'm I'm targeting now the ally, so ampersand parent in a hover state. Before we need to add some content, a empty string as a content. We're going to position this as absolute our content is going to be to the left side positioned as zero to the bottom is going to be uh, let's say minus 0 0.5 rem then it's going to have a width of 100 percent so it's going to take up the entire percent of the entire the entire width the entire percent good one and to do, 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 do I also need a height. So the content is going to have a height of one pixel and it's going to have a background. Also just type in background of gold light. Okay. And now I'm also going to use an animation. So let's type in here animation. And for this animation, we need a keyframe. So let's go outside. Let's create a keyframe. The name is going to be, let's say, fade in. And we're going to go from a opacity. So at 0%, it's going to have a opacity of 0. And at 100%, it's going to have a opacity of 1. Boom. Let's hit save. And we have an error. See, fade in. Okay. So the animation is also user animation. The animation name is fade in. The animation is going to take one second and it's going to have the effect of ease. Okay, and now everything is compiled successfully. Let's see. Hey. Boom. There we go. Okay, so we're done with this. Okay, so we can close this up. And let's take a look at our navigation. Hey, you beautiful navigation. Boom. We are done with it. Okay, next up, let's... I want to move on, but I want to create another component. Or should I create it later on? Uh, let's see, next up is the header. We don't need any kind of button. So let's do this. Let's create. This was our navigation. And now comes the header so comment header okay now for the header i'm going to create a header tag it's going to have an id of header it's going to have a class of container and remember the class of container is it has a fixed maximum width and it has margins auto 
so uh, within our container, we're going to have then the H2 is going to be the title. Now this H2 is going to have a couple of classes. First of all, text center, we want our text to be centered. Then we're going to have a font family of Milonga. Then a text of XXL, the so text size. Then a text gold mid gold <laughs> for text color and that's basically it now we can type in here the text of I'm actually going to copy in it's time boom it's time dot 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 new movie coming october 22 boom now after h2 we're going to insert here a image text so image and for the image, we're going to go into the distribution folder again. So forward slash this images, and we're going to take the message image PNG. And let's see, we should already have it in here. Perfect. Okay, now that's basically it for the header. We are going to style it a bit more. Oh, wait just a second. Header text text center f longer uh, text xsl and i misspelled center here huh okay now the text is in the center the image all of this we're going to take care uh we're going to come go to the responsive part because i want to add here animation okay so we're done with our header now let's move on to the next section. So let me go down here and create the comment section one. And this is going to be a section tag with a ID of a hey, so ID of movie then a class of container. We're going to display this as flex and within our section we're going to have an h2 so exactly this h2 that we have up here then follows i'm just going to copy it then followed by anchor tag which is going to have a class of btn and btn and another class of text and gold okay with in this btn class well we first all need to create this btn class so this is a button component so let's go to components and let's create a underscore btn component dot scss so first things first let's create a class btn targeted now these are just a couple of regular uh, general settings that i always use i'm just going to copy them in so font family inherit whatever font family the the body has the button is going to automatically inherit it okay so it's not in its own environment it's going to inherit text we are going to have borders none cursor pointer margins we are going to have a bit of a margin padding display inline block always font size is going to always have a 400 font size font size uh, font weight sorry about that a font size of one ram uh line height of 1.5 and so forth and so on okay now um we can extend this and say button gold and we're going to have a gold button that the background is going to have a gold boom uh color now the color of the text is going to be hash fff so white color we're going to give it also a box shadow and it's going to be 0, 0, 15 pixels and 3 pixels for the spread. And within says you can use actually RGBA within here. And not only that, but we're also going to boom, delete all of this and we're going to use a variable. So the color is going to be gold color. And then the alpha 
is going to be 0 0.25. Okay, let's hit save. Uh, that's it for this part. Now we are going to hover over our button. So in the hover state, we are going to change the background color to a now, I'm going to use something called darken. This is basically a function in SAS. And what darken does is going to darken whatever color you type in here. In our case, it's going to darken the gold color with the amount of 5%. Okay. And I'm also going to change the box shadow a bit go to change the alpha to 0 0.4 and that's basically it now all of this should take 3, 0.3 seconds so i'm going to add here transition of 0.3 seconds and ease and also on its return so i'm going to go to gold and say eh, you can just copy this transition oh not in here but in here uh, also, when we hover out of it, it should take that 0.3 seconds. So there's nothing in here because we still need to create it and also import it. So components and btn. Import this component. Now let's go back to our index.html. And within here, we're going to create the icon tag with the class of far. And we're going to use font awesome. fa, then play, then circle. and then dot f a and four x it's going to increase it four times let's hit enter and there's a button we have thing that we need here the last thing is going to be another image so image tag i'm going to go to distribution so dist and images and from here we're going to select the tune logo small Okay, and there we go. I still need to make, make this smaller, so I'm going to take care of this a bit later on. Okay, it's time for the next section, which is going to be the new sections. Actually, let's type in here section movie, and the next one is going to be section latest news. Okay, again, I'm going to create a section tag with the ID of latest news. and the class of container. Again, we're going to have the same H2 that we have up here, but with a different title. So this is going to be, I'm just going to copy in the title, uh, latest news, because I think you're already getting the, the ID here. So we're using our classes that we already created and components in order to do a kind of a framework, a kind of CSS framework. So basically we're creating our own framework. Okay, after this, we're going to have an H3 with a class of text LG. And I'm just going to copy in the text. Boom, and after H3, we're going to have a paragraph tag. So let's also take a look at how this looks. Down here, we have an LG. Then let's create a paragraph tag. And it's going to have some kind of text within it. I'm just going to type in lorem uh, 300. There we go. Oh, this is a bit too much. Let's delete some from it. Now, after our anchor tag, we're also going to have a button. So anchor, after our paragraph, we're going to have a button. This, uh, not, not a button, it's just a link. So I'm going to create an anchor tag and Give the class of class text gold and just type in here the link or we'll copy it in. Then we're going to have a general div, which is going to have a class of the flex and it's going to include a image. So image and the source going to be again from the distribution forward slash distribution, images, and let's see, we're going to have a covert one. And after that, we're going to have a button, 
So button tag is going to have a class of the regular btn class and then btn-gold. And within this button, we're going to have icon tag, fas, fa, dash, book, and open. Okay, and for the text, we're just going to have, well, after the anchor tag, comic shop location. Okay, so there we go. There's a button, when we hover over it, you can see everything changes. Okay, so the next section is pretty similar, so I'm just going to copy it in. And paste it in here. Uh, we seem that we have a problem somewhere. Uh, section, section, body, I think, class, Amazon. So what do I messed up here? Pull open. Oh, user, what is wrong with you? You should be a comment. That's what is wrong with you. All right, we're missing here the section tag because both of them are in the same section. So, damn it. Okay, delete this one and there we go. So both of them were in the same section. Okay, now let's move on to our very last section, which is actually the form. Now, first things first, I want to create the form component. So let's go into components, create a new component called form, SCSS. Let's also import it. So right after the button, we're going to import our form. Then let's go to the form component. Let's, and let's start creating our component. So form, we're going to go in here, change the background color to hash, uh, say, uh, zero, zero, 001D25. Then I'm going to give it a all around padding, padding to RAM all around. We're going to include, we're going to include our, our flex mixing, so display flex. I'm going to change the flex direction now to column. So we're going to change the flex direction to a column. And let's align the items now as flex start. So now we, we had them um, aligned to the center and I said we can change it up now. Now also I'm going to extend a class. What does this mean? When you're extending class, you're taking everything that a class has and extending it to another class, all of the properties. So you just type in extend and then the class name, which in our case is M-2, which is margin two, okay? Now I'm going to also create here another class of dot input and group. Now this class of input group is going to have a width of 100% of its container. It's also going to be displayed as flex. So let's include our flex mix in again. So include the flex and let's change the flex direction again to a column. I'm just going to copy this. Why do I have this white space in here? Uh, align the items again to flex start and we're going to give it a margin from the bottom of two rem. Okay. Now within this input group, we're going to have labels and input tags. So let's first of all target a label tag and let's say that the margin to the bottom of the label tag will be 0 0.5 rem. After that, we're going to target all of the inputs that are in this class or in this yeah in this class of input group i'm going to display them as block we're going to have a width of 100 percent of their container we're going to give them a padding of 0 0.35 0 0.375 top and bottom and 0 0.75 ram also specified the other one as ram to the top and bottom, left and right. Okay, and the rest of the settings, I'm just going to copy in, so don't waste any time. So we're going to have a font size of one RAM, font weight of 400, line height of 1.5. So it's pretty similar to a bottom button component, but yeah. So a very quick note we have here in our finished projects, let's go down here, uh, zip code. Now this zip code is a number input. 
Now when I'm inputting number, when you're creating a number input, you know you have those arrows here, top and bottom. Don't like them, so let's just take them out and there's a simple way you can do this. Let's say here, remove up and down arrows. Now if you like them, you can leave them in rows, but I don't like them, so we're going to do a target the parent and then we going to use a web kit. This web kit, the second web kit is a pretty long name. Web kit, uh, outer spin button, and then another one. And you should also have here a slash web kit inner spin button. Okay, and both of them are going to have an appearance of none. Boom. So later you will see when we're going to create those input tags that they're, they will not appear. Okay, now we're done with our form. Now let's actually create our form. So let's go let's close off the PTNs, close now mix since we still need them. Let's go down here in our form in our HTML and let's create another section tag. So section, this one is going to have the ID of sign up, dash up, and it's going to have the class of container. Boom. Within our section, now we can create a title and then the form. So I'm going to create an H2, I'm just going to copy this H2, it's always the same H2. Where are you? There we are. H2 da, 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 text, but the text is going to be sign up for the latest Dune news. And then we're going to create our form. Now this form is going to be in a form tag with a class of form. Okay. So the form is going to have a title, we're going to have an H2 text, LG and margin bottom free. It's going to be subscribe for the text within it. Okay, let's scroll up a bit. After this, we're going to have a div or a couple of divs. We're going to have class of input group. So the input group that we just created. And within this input group, we're going to have a label uh, plus just type in two pluses plus a input tag. Now I'm going to change up the input tags later on, but first of all, let's just create this. And we could, well, let me go back, input, and let's put a parenthesis all around it. And let's multiply it. Let's see, we have one, two, three, four, input groups. So times four. Now the very first input group label input tag. So the very first one, let's see, this is email. And let's also change the type of to email of the input tag. And let's place in as a placeholder. I uh, should have done this to all of them. So let's control Z. Let's option through them. So select all of them. And let's say placeholder. is equal to quotes and there we go. Now the very first one is enter your email address, mail address. Okay, now the next one, the next input group. So let's take a look at uh, what we just created. So, hey, hey, there we go. Let's see how quickly this goes. Then the next one is going to be let me just to get it for the name. So label is going to be name. It's going to be input text. So enter your full name. Full name. Then the next input tag. Well, this is the special one because this is going to be post till 
zip code and this input tag is going to be number okay and placeholder is going to be enter your zip code enter your zip code now let's hit save let's take a look on our finished project down here a zip code you can see on the right side there are no arrows so if we go back to our code to our form and i would comment out this appearance none go back here there there are the arrows so if you like the arrows leave them in have something in you can then mess up because that's what i'm afraid of that people would use this and uh, well i don't like them so i'm going to comment this back in and if i do this then there are no more arrows yay okay so let's close up our form let's go back into our form and the last thing we needed for the label is country and the place so we're going to leave the input as a text and enter your country okay now we're not that we're not, not done with our form we still need a submit button so let's create here a button with the type of submit submit and we're going to use the class of ptn and ptn dash gold and with the text of subscribe boom there we go now if we take a look at our form there's also a subscribe button okay so we're done with this part now let's make everything responsive and let's let's arrange it a bit so next up responsiveness now we can basically close up our index uh, our main style we still need we need to create now here in our utilities let's create here not a partial calls it responsive on save.scss let's import it so this is a utility is going to be imported at the end so responsive let's go into our responsive file and first things first let's take care of a large screen so at media screen and let's say the max width of the screen it's 1200 pixels then something should happen and the something is that the header so hash the header id within here our h2 is going to have a margin top of free ram a font weight of 100 and now we're going to include a animation so let's go back to our mix ins that's why i left it open and let's create here at mix in we're going to call this fade fade in and within here we're going to create the animation so animation so animation is a key keyframe the keyframe name is going to be fade in again and this is going to go from zero percent with a opacity of zero a filter never used filter you can use different filters so we're going to use blur of five pixels so this is using pixels as a unit whoa yes i know so let's also include it here so they don't have errors um it's going to take five seconds and ease okay that's green and it's also going to have a transform of scale i'm going to scale it from 0 0.5 so 0 0.5 not 0 not 0 0.05 and we, when we are at 100 100 actually at 50 percent we're going to have a transform of scale of 1.1 so it's going to overscale and we're going to have a and when we're at 100 percent then we're just going to have an opacity of one and that's basically it okay so let's go back to our responsiveness and i said the h2 we're actually done with our mix-ins we can now include 
So add include our mixing of fade in. Let's hit enter. And uh, actually, it's still not done. So let's also change the height to 50, I'm sorry, to 85 viewport heights. And then uh, for that, let's also target the image. As I said, we need to make the image, we need to position the image a bit. So we're going to position it with a margin of 20 view. You can also use viewport heights in margin, okay? And auto for top and bottom. Okay, so let's see what we just did. Let's close up this. And when we are at this scale, there we go. Okay, we see that the animation is working and also everything is resizing. So we're still not done. Now need to target the idea of movie. And let's say we're going to this, we're going to change the flex direction to column. Okay. And then the last thing that we need to do is the H2 and the icon tag should have a margin say margin bottom of the variable of xxl boom there we go so when i'm at here they are now in a column okay so the last one that we need is a media query when we're on a small device so let's say at media we're going to now target and a screen size when we're max width of 600 pixels. Now, first of all, let's target the navigation. You saw that the navigation disappeared. So we're going to target the ID of navigation. And we're going to say that the unordered list elements, so not the entire navigation, are going to be displayed as none. Boom. Okay, next up the header. So hash ID header, capital H. I'm going to change the image the margin 20 viewport heights and auto and also is going to transform with a scale of just 0 0.4 okay now again let's target the movies that's what we did in our previous one and I'm going to target the h2 within it and change the font size to a lg font size okay so when we're then my smaller screen, we're also going to change the font size. Now, last thing, we're going to target the image and its height. The image tag, its height is going to change to 280 pixels. Boom. Okay, now after our movies, we have our latest news section. So, latest news. And the, we're just going to change the text alignment to center. And the image should change its width to 380 pixels. So, all right, there we go. There's our website now. Yeah, our animation's working. We got our sections, we got our responsiveness, we got our hover effects. And once again, hope you enjoyed this project. If it did, thumbs up. If it didn't, thumbs down. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already, already subscribed. Leave a comment in the comment section below if you wish to see any kind of other projects or if you have any kind of suggestions. If you have any kind of questions, also leave them down in the comment section below. And with this being said, I'm Norbert BM and catch you next time. Bye-bye.